Well, happy Sabbath. I just, um, I've been doing some things and, and uh, taking care of things. And uh, so now I'm at home. Uh, I miss uh, the Nehemiah Center uh, Sabbath day service. And I'm sorry for that, but uh, I'm here. And I've been dealing with quite a bit. Um, and it has nothing to do with what people say about me on YouTube. Frankly, it does not matter to me what they say, for they really don't know me. And, um, And one lady, I, I, I'm starting to delete a lot of things that people say. I mean, it just takes away with what I'm trying to say. And if you want to come here and start belittling me, and, and one said, I'm glad I'm not a member of your cult. And, uh, well, I'm glad she's not either, because she shouldn't be a member of any uh, cult at all. Um... If this happens to be a cult, I'm the poorest cult person in the world. Usually they get a lot of money like Elizabeth does from her followers. And I don't even know if I have any followers on here. There's a few that come and are loyal to come and hear what I say. But they're not, there's no organization no mighty wind ministry organization no jim jones ministry organization honestly i'm just one person out here trying to do what i'm led to do to talk to you I don't, that's why I don't ask for money and I don't want no money because that's what cult leaders do. They they start these occults so that they can get rich, get lots of money and live off the backs of the poor people of their members of their congregation. I have no church. My little place was right here in my bedroom that I talk from. And... Uh, the few people that do encourage me and pray for me, you know, I, I, I thank you. I really do. And I don't want you to ever send me any money. No. God is providing. Pr providing for me quite well. And it's not coming off the backs of poor people that have problems of their own. Like w one lady she's in pain she has she's sick she needs prayer I pray for her Tina prays for her we hold her up continuously before the father through the blood of Yeshua and the stripes he bore on our back I could not ask her to send me money when she needs it herself now she she sent some money to Tina when Tina was in really desperate need. And you know, I pray that God blessed us her mighty for that. And, and there were some others that did. But it all went to Tina. None of it came to me. But what bothers me, I love this country. I really do. I love America. I was born here at Sand Springs, Oklahoma, near Tulsa, Oklahoma, in a hospital that no longer is in existence. They call it Mayflower Hospital. Um, I've had, you know, my relatives dated back from when, when uh, the pilgrims come over. <laughs> Uh, um, on uh, some of my family, it's got Teal in their name, I mean their last name, which 
is on a roll uh, that come over. I don't remember which ship they come over on. I don't think it was the Mayflower. It was one of the others. But anyway, and then the ones that come from overseas married into the Cherokee Indians. And, and um, that's how that all got going. But I love America. And I truly believe that she was founded on God's principles. That's, that's why the pilgrims come here. And yes, they didn't call it America or United States back then when they come. But it's still about the land. They come to this land that God provided for them to have freedom to worship Him. And when George Washington led them to that little chapel, that that sycamore tree happened to to um, hmm, to save, and I think it was for a purpose, a sign. And the cross was found there, a sign that America still had hope if people would repent. But I have come to the point, I really don't think America's going to repent. Now, I know you'll say, well, why are you speaking negatively? Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just beginning to realize that. That. America is not willing, nor do they want to repent. They are content and happy in their lifestyle that they're doing. Sad to say. It does break my heart. It, it, it really does. It breaks my heart mightily that to come to the realization that America does not want to repent. And one person kept saying, uh, you know, um, about all of the Messianic uh, people that was at the beginning, you know, not the Messianic, but the Masons, Masons, okay? And I know this. And I can look all around America and see all of the pagan idols and the pagan stuff that they do and the pagan stuff that the church does. I mean, you know, you got to get down to it. The church quit having, um, holding the Sabbath day holy and they went to the Sunday because that's pagan. It is. Roman pagan. They brought in the Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas because it's pagan. Many of the the idols and stuff they had sitting around is pagan from the Greek and Roman goddesses, you know. Isis is one of the biggest one that they have built all over the place. But yet they can take the Ten Commandments down and leave those stupid pagan idols standing. But as I was praying this, and they keep saying that this is Babylon, well, okay, let's go with that. So when you go back and you find out what, how God talked in Isaiah, let me see if I can find it really quick on what's going to happen to Babylon. Is it in Isaiah? Let's see. Because 
we there's prophecy saying and if we're if we're if we are Babylon I mean truly are Babylon then she's going to be destroyed totally where in the world is it let me see or is it Ezekiel let me see I'm trying to find where it talks about the destruction of Babylon because um, she is going to be utterly totally destroyed and be a runness heap her cities are going to be destroyed her land is going to be destroyed her people is going to be destroyed the animals that you know I mean everything in Babylon is going to be totally 100% destroyed, wiped out, plumbed down to the ground, where there's only going to be jackals roam. So, if you're saying that, then you're confirming what I'm telling you. America is going to be destroyed because of her sin. I mean, people need to wake up. Okay, let's see. Judgment against Babylon. Isaiah 47. Let's see what it says. Come down and set in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Set on the ground. There is no throne, no daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and del delicious. A delicious. Take the millstone and grind mill, uncover the lock, make barren the lag, uncover the thigh, pass over the river. Thy nakedness shall be over uncovered, yea, the shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. God says, I'm going to take vengeance. I will not I will not meet thee as a man. As for our our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is in his name, and the Holy One of Israel. So, set thou silent, get thee into darkness, O daughter of Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. And, honestly, we are called the Lady of Kingdoms. Um, you know, so this could be pretty well talking about Babylon. I was wrath with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and gave them into thy hand. Thou dost show them no mercy upon upon the ancient hast thou very heavenly laid thy yoke. Okay, that's when talking about Israel, which is his holy one. And he had Israel taken into captivity. And he totally dealt with her very harshly because of her sins talking about Israel but being that we have no mercy for Israel and we do deal heavily handed with her we want to divide her land and stuff let's go ahead and read and thou sayest I shall be a lady forever so thou dost not lay these things to the heart neither dost remember the latter end of it and we do People here in America think, oh, oh, we're going to be America forever. We are the great America. We do not realize that the blessings that were once poured out upon us is ceasing and beginning to end. And the hedge is gone of protection from us. Therefore hear now this, that thou art given to pleasure. We are. We're given to pleasure. And thou dost carelessly say in thy heart, I am, and none else besides me. I shall set, not set as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of, my ch of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, 
in one day the loss of children and widowhood thou shalt come upon thee in their perfection for a multitude of thy sorcerers and for the great abundance of thine enchantments that's for the witchcraft and crap that we do here in America the sorcerers and, and the witchcraft for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness thou hast said none seeth me thy wise and thy knowledge it hath provoked thee and thou hast said in thy heart I am and now else none else beside me and we have said that for years and years therefore shall evil come upon thee thou shalt not know from whence it rises and you know it be it, it did 9-11 it come upon us and we didn't know where it was coming I mean it was just like that it did but the greater judgment is still to come and therefore shall evil and evil will come again upon thee thou shalt not know from whence it rises mischief shall fall upon thee and thou shalt not be able to put it off and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly which thou shalt not know stand now with thine enchanters and with the multitude of thy sorcerers so you know bring them on bring out the sorcerers bring out the enchanters bring out the false preachers and the false prophets bring them on out wherein thou hast labored from thy youth if so be thou shalt be able to perfect if so shall thou mayest prevail thou art where wearied in the multitude of thy counsel let now the astrologers the stargazers and the monthly p r o g n o s t i c a t o l s stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon you so you know all you people out there that think that you have all of this power and you can read the stars and you can do all of this come on save save America if you think you can but behold thou shalt be a stumbler stumble the fire shall burn them fire shall burn them they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame there shall not be a cold to warm or at nor far to set before thou thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored even thy merchants from thy youth they shall wander every one to his own quarter and none shall save them America is going to be destroyed America is in great trouble. If you go over in 46, you will see about Babylon of Isaiah. It, will, it talks about the idols that Babylon here has. And we see them all over America. There, there is no, no if ends buts about it we have become so corrupt and we worship idols more than we worship God I mean look at the halftime when Madonna come out as Isis look at what went on in England at the Olympics I mean it was all satanic and things that's coming about we have become a promiscuous country self-serving and self-delusional and that's why America will be destroyed utterly totally and she will be laid in runs and become a runless heap because of her disobedience So, and God's going to do it. God's going to do it. 
whether you people like to think about it or not, he is going to do it. And he says he would. His vengeance will be poured out. Whether you want to believe where we're founded on, uh, founded on the principles of God or not, but we have become Babylon. We have turned ourselves to a nation that no longer respects God, respects his laws or his ordinances. We become a selfish, self-righteous, and self-centered nation, thinking that none can destroy us. That's only a delusion of your mind. And that's why God has put on my heart to tell you to repent, repent. But, I had a dream and I seen the fury of God upon America because of her disobedience and her delusions that she has wrapped herself in. But this is what I'm going to read to you out of St. John to his children his called out ones, his raiment that he's calling out because America has a raiment here I'm going to read to you out of chapter 17 of John beginning with verse 20 this is what Jesus is saying, Yeshua Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the word. So see, this is the prayer for the, his body, the, re, the redeem, the, that raiment that he's calling out. He prayed for him them there, then, the, the apostles and disciples that were standing around, but he projected this prayer all the way to us because we have come to believe in him through the word let's go on that they all may be one as though as thy father art in me I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou givest me I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that thou also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And they have known, and those have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, and they and that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Even though America is going to be destroyed, people, there is a raiment that will be left. There is a raiment that will be covered by him, by his blood, and protected by him. We are going to be, we are being sealed right now in His perfection. I am sad about what will be happening to America. She was a great country and blessed in many ways. A country that grew in a very short time with all the technology and 
and just unbelievable speed that she de developed from coming over on ships riding across this land on horses and buggies eventually cars and planes the technology of this country is really unbelievable compared to other countries that had come up Rome, Greece, all of them they had their times of growth and where their technology was great but what happened here in America was unbelievable at the speed of the technology the phone, the the internet, the, the, the TV, the the things that develop so fast here in America no other country has done it we fed not only ourselves but many nations we sent forth the gospel to many nations and now it's come to the point that they're having to send missionaries here to try to get us to come back to God. You know, the plane that crashed out in San Francisco and the two young girls that died in that plane crash were missionaries. Missionaries coming here to America to bring back the gospel to America. That's how how we have fallen so whether you want to believe that we would ever found it on America I mean on God's principles I do believe we would this land was dedicated to him at one time but we forgot him and he's going to take back the land you know, there was people here living before the white man ever come. And the white man come and walked through and took the land away from them. Like Israel did in the promised land when they walked through and they took the land away from all the Canaanites, Hittites, and all of them that lived there. They walked through and they took it away. Well, not completely. They let people stay there which they weren't supposed to but they did but anyway it was a land that was um, occupied before they got there and God gave it to them and they took it over that's the way it was here in America it was occupied and God let us take it over but he took it away, the land from Israel, for around 1,800 and some odd years. It laid barren and in ruins. And then in 1948, they come back. How long will our land lay in ruins before he will permit people to come back and inhabit this land? Uh, when Jesus comes back? I don't know. But I'm sad tonight. I'm sad that our government has become so evil, wanting to take away our rights, and the people become so angry. So, we've become a nation that if we don't get our way let's just go out and try to do change a law change this change that you know like with the Zimmerman I know people don't agree with me on that but I don't care I if we don't like the outcome let's just change the law and and go at it at a different way to prosecute somebody now I know it's not double, double jeopardy, but in my mind I still think it is. When you're tried and you're found innocent, that's the way it should be. 
don't check don't go in and get a law and try to change things and if that person is found guilty then put them in prison and let them go through the process of uh, trying to get it overturned I mean that's a legal process my heart is just grieved for America it really ha is we really are messing up and America don't want to hear the people don't want to hear the, the pastors of churches don't want to hear and say you know you people need to quit sinning and start doing what God tells you to do they want to say oh it's all by grace and you, you know you're saved by grace and it doesn't matter what you do after that, just as long as you, you, you'll be saved by grace. No, you are saved by grace, but there are obligations that you have to do to keep that grace effective in your life. And that's to walk as He has commanded us to walk in holiness and righteousness and in love and in peace. We're not a peaceful country anymore. We're a very angry, mob-infested country with hate and bitterness and destruction. We're a country that's divided. And we're a country that's killing our own self. But I did read John to you, those that need the hope and the faith and you know who Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ truly is, know no matter what you see going on around you, He had prayed a prayer when He walked this earth just for you. Accept it, believe it, and walk it. This is my Sabbath day. my Sabbath day talk, okay? I love you. I love my country. I really love my country. But I see her being destroyed. People, there is a heaven and there is a hell. you got to make a choice one way or the other be blessed father please bless this video for your glory not for mine but for yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Amen and Amen